perhaps it's uh, it's the journey that he's taken. Um, I mean, I think you can see Doll's House too without seeing the Doll's House. But if you see the Doll's House, it's sort of, if you look at it on a different level, I suppose. So seeing, you know, uh, where's that been past and what he's gone through, and then he's had these 15 years in between, and then suddenly, boom, she's back again, and, you know, it's how he takes it. How he handles the whole thing and what his feelings are, and, uh, yeah. And there are a lot of uh, layers in the piece, uh, and you can see things on uh, different levels as well. I think it's, it's also a very, it's a very, uh, it's a very funny piece. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, I think it's a very funny piece, but it's also, uh, it's quite a deep piece mm -hmm. as well. And I think, in a sense, that's the sort of, the best sort of theatre when you have this this mixture of the two, this sort of balance between comedy and, and tragedy, and I think it's a little bit of both. Yeah. The play sort of moves around a bit. You know, it opens, and uh, to begin with, you know, it's like almost like a dance or something like that. You think you're watching a, a period piece, mm -hmm. and then it sort of takes a turn, and you know, the, the, the language is, is quite uh, modern times. Um, yeah, I mean, the set is sort of period, the costumes are more or less as well. Um, and, and the stage is sort of quite minimalistic as well, which is it's quite nice. Because sometimes as an actor, you know, you can, you can hide behind things. But there's, there's nowhere to hide on the stage. There's, there's nothing there, I'm not very much. When he wrote it and he presented it, I think uh, the initial reaction from people was like, "What do you mean it does have a part two? How, how, you know, why do you think you can write a sequel to that?" And then you know, people read it and they saw it and they realised, you know, it's uh, a beautiful piece of writing, very, very clever. And, um, so I think it's 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 modern, but it's also period. It's 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 a funny mixture. Mm -hmm. As well, but it also you know it gets back to the topic because the topic is an age-old topic and it's still with us now. You know, some really interesting points about marriage as well, and relationships. And, yeah, it's a lot of meat to the, the play. I think that's a good one actually because uh, at one point. Nora says, um, you never get angry. So I've, I've just got to make sure I never get angry. Because he says, oh, of course, uh, of course I get angry. But he doesn't, he's not supposed to. Um, but there are pieces before that where it's actually very easy to get ang angry. But it's, it's almost the difference between frustration and anger. And trying to keep a, a lid on it, keep it, keep it down. Otherwise, yeah, the rest doesn't doesn't work. Thank you. In quite a relationship, it's a little bit like uh, Kate uh, Chukio, Chukio in in uh, Tell Me the Shrew. Mm -hmm. uh, it's there. You know, they're always sort of at each other's throats, but. There is something between them. Uh, I think maybe it's maybe it's a subject that's very current at the moment. You know, this this um, how women are treated and equality. Um, yeah, it's a slow process. I think recently it's sort of sped up. Which is great. Yeah. I think it makes you think, actually. Or makes me think. Some interesting writing about uh, relationships and marriage 
and and the point of it all of how it affects us and what we have to live with. Um, it's not it's not what doing do. <laughs> it's actually done in a in a, in a lot of way. Mm -hmm. Funny also that even the writer is a miller. Yeah. So it's quite interesting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So but yeah, in America it's a very, very, very popular piece. I think it was up for all sorts of awards and I think it gets played. I mean, it's only, it's only been around for like four or five years, I think. It gets played a lot yeah. in America because it's so popular. But I don't think it's been done in the UK, actually. I think they're, they're, they're due to put it in London at the West End, but they've not done it yet. Not, not really, actually. I mean, uh, a lot of actors, uh, it's very important for them to have the right shoes on. Have you heard that before? No. Yeah. It's, and it's true, it's because if you have the right shoes on, you hold yourself in mm -hmm. a certain way. So, in the rehearsal room, because the rehearsal room is also used as a dance studio, when we come in, we have to wear these. <laughs> These sexy numbers. So, but um, I've got I've got a pair of rehearsal shoes, and I put I sort of so I take these off and I put rehearsal rehearsal shoes on. And uh, and Adrian, I think in fact everyone does because they're they're like period shoes. And I mean we're not working with costume pieces at the moment, but I'm sure the costume on. And I, I mean I'm. I'm wearing trousers, I'm not wearing jeans. Okay. So I can, and I always wear jeans. So I'm just sort of trying to get used to wearing trousers. Um, or just, it, it's just nicer to, to, to move in a pair of trousers knowing that I'm going to be playing in trousers. Yeah. And, uh, but I know from my costume fitting that the, you know, it's a period. So it's it's not like I'm wearing a girdle, but it's almost like that because the trousers come up so high. So, yeah. You move differently, you sit differently, and it's like if you put a regular suit on. So, so back to your question, I would say, you know, it's nice to have uh, shoes mm -hmm. in rehearsal that are fitting for the piece, and you know, I'm using like a, a frank a coat as well. So, yeah.